Well, just two years ago, the name Reed Shepard was hardly known outside of Laurel County, but this year he's all anyone can talk about. The biggest game of his freshman season included a quadruple double against Jackson County. 24 points, 10 rebounds, 10 steals and 14 assists. Now his sophomore campaign, a completely different story. Racking in 54 points against Corbin in a 50 point triple double with 11 assists and 10 rebounds against South Laurel. Hello everyone, this is a special report from WIMT Mountain Sports. I'm Camille Gear. Leslie County native Tim Couch is getting ready to be inducted into the 38th class of the National High School Hall of Fame in Orlando, Florida. Couch was a record setting quarterback and excelled in other sports too at Leslie County High School in the mid 1990s before playing at UK in the NFL. Let's take you now live to Orlando where the induction ceremony is underway. Hello everyone and welcome back to Red Hound Stadium. A big game here in Corbin tonight to kick off week three of the high school football season. The Corbin Red Hounds playing host to the Franklin County Flyers. Talk about a powerhouse of a class for a matchup tonight. Now Franklin County, the 2020 class for a runners up, losing to Boyle County in the state championship game, 31 to 28. Kentucky's win against Chattanooga on Saturday definitely was not a pretty one, but a win is still a win. As the Cats look to go 4-0, the road only gets tougher from here on out. Well, this past week has been full of loss for Eastern Kentucky as we mourn a mountain legend, Johnson Central's Jim Matney. Jim Matney was a father, a husband, a friend, a coach, and so much more. In just a matter of days, Kentucky basketball goes from zero point guards to two standout ones. The latest to join John Calipari's roster is Georgia transfer Severe Wheeler. But you know, this season was one of unexpected. We didn't know if we were going to play in the spring. We didn't know if we would play in the fall or have a season at all. So I know we're excited. I know the players, coaches and fans are so pumped and just can't wait for Friday Night Lights. If you've been a fan of mountain football long enough, you know about Philip Haywood's Belfry Pirates and the winningest coach of Kentucky. They've won seven state titles. Can they get number eight? For our next award, it's the best part of the season, the playoffs. It's do or die, win or go home. As an athlete, you live for one moment to be better than the rest. Oh, you know, I'm excited for Kentucky, Tennessee. That's like Christmas for me, so I'm pumped for that game. And I'm Camille Gear. Well, Willie, the SEC football is finally back. Thank goodness. I know we've, we've been waiting months <laughs> at this point. But just in case you moved off your couch today and missed a play or two, we've we got did, you covered. We did not move off our couches. We've been watching SEC football all day. Kentucky Volleyball looking to make history tonight, trying to win their first ever national championship in school history and also trying to be the first team from the SEC to win a national title as well. After having to wait 49 years for a region title in 2019, the Knox Central Panthers decided they wanted more, winning in 2020 as well. The back-to-back -back region titles have put a target on Knox Central's back, and rightfully so, as they've won their district and the 2A sectional in back-to-back -back years. Another wild Friday night. Camille, how was it from home? Did you enjoy the show from home, enjoy all the scores coming in and all that? <laughs> it was fun. Definitely never thought I'd be anchoring from my living room. But, you know, we've said all season long, 2020 brings new things each and every day. So, of course, this is going to happen on a semifinal night. So what makes a team a dynasty? Is it one player? Is it the number of championships won? Or is it a fearless leader in the driver's seat? Whatever it is, the Johnson Central Golden Eagles are making just that with their fifth straight trip to the state championship in 2019. I actually forgot my costume at home, um, but luckily... Cumberland and Union <laughs> don't take any offense. This luckily, we have jerseys, you. helmets. You need this anything is... with sports, we've got it here at WYMT, so I pulled this <laughs> out of the closet. <laughs> well, there are a number of teams throughout the mountains that are synonymous with the boys' Sweet 16. From Richie Farmer and Clay County's overtime win in 1987, to J.R. Van Hoos in the Paintsville Tigers in 96. And finally, Walt Allen in the South Laurel Cardinals bringing home the title in 2005. Would head coach Jason Boer and Eliza Justice be the next great duo to bring the glory back to the mountains? With the boys side wrapped up in the mountains for the KHSAA Sweet 16, we shift our attention now to next week's girls tournament where we have four teams hoping to make a deep run in the Sweet 16. Now all of these programs have tournament experience from the past two years and two of 
them are repeat champions. Let's start in the 12th region. The Southwestern Lady Warriors are back in the girls' sweet 16 after a one-year hiatus. The good thing for the Lady Warriors is that in 2019, when they made it, they ended up in the championship game. Of course, Southwestern is looking to duplicate that success this year. Although the Lady Warriors feel that most didn't think they would be in this position heading into the season. A storied rivalry in Eastern Kentucky is Paintsville versus Pikeville. Whether the game is played in the 606 or like this year at Kroger Field, Tigers versus Panthers is one to remember. 